We are going to go in reverse in this edition of your Florida forecast because the tropics are of interest to Florida. And then we're going to go zone by zone as we get ready to close out the work week. Talk about limited storm chances as well for the state of Florida. But all eyes are going to be on the Gulf of Mexico. There is no reason to freak out. I'm going to talk all about that little entity, that orange blob that highlights the Western Gulf, the Western Caribbean and Eastern Gulf of Mexico as well. I want to show you a few models first. And before we get into this video, if you do want to stay updated on this little entity and all things Florida weather, and if we continue through the peak of hurricane season, hit that subscribe button. If you find this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I want to start with the GFS. There are a lot of people in central Florida and across social media that are sharing these crazy, crazy model runs of a strong hurricane coming to Florida. Is it in the realm of possibilities? It is. But there are limiting factors, and I'm going to break those limiting factors down as well. The GFS, the American GFS, does not have much. There is the 28th. We're looking towards the time frame of the 29th, 30th, and 31st for any potential impacts from this little blob that is still on the Pacific side of Central America right now. I'll show you a closer view of that in a little bit. But there is the tropical GFS. It shows rain coming in. At the very least, I do think our rain chances are going up through a lot of the state of Florida. What the deal is, we're going to have a cold front draped across the deep south, and that is going to act kind of as a pathway for some tropical moisture to surge up from the deep tropics from Central America, from the Western Caribbean, Southwest Gulf, right on into the Eastern Gulf of Mexico. So something we're watching. So point number one is the GFS keeps this pretty weak. Here is the Euro that everybody loves, rightfully so. It has its moments where it does well, but it also has its moments where it does not do well. Here's the deal with the Euro. It is the more aggressive of the model. What you see here on the right side of your screen here, that is Franklin. That is not coming here. That is going to be a potentially major hurricane in between the U.S. and Bermuda. But what we're watching here going forward, I'm going to uh, show you this work its, way, work its way in as we get towards the 29th and 30th. You see those lines. Those are isobars. When you have more of those show up, it shows a stronger storm. What this is showing us here is that we likely are going to have a middle of the road to strong tropical storm according to the euro that's what the euro believes okay that's the european model again on the gulf coast of florida that is certainly in the realm of possibilities while that certainly looks stronger and it is that's still not terribly strong we're going to get into some of the reasons why that may be not that strong in a couple of minutes what i want to show you first the best thing to look at rather than model run after model run of just the Euro or just the GFS or just the Icon or just the Canadian, whatever model you choose, it's going to be the ensembles. Because what happens in an ensemble, just like a band, there's a bunch of different members that make up the ensemble. So this is going to be the European ensemble. Each member is a different kind of piece of it with different initial conditions kind of put in it. We like these because when there's a high area of uncertainty, like there is with this cluster of storms over Central America, it gives us a range of outcomes rather than one point, like those models that I just showed you. So what we have here, pretty good consensus that a tropical entity is going to roll off of the Yucatan, get into... Uh, the Western Caribbean, and then kind of lift up towards the Gulf of Mexico. Well, the water's crazy hot. But there's also the environment, upper levels, mid-levels, that may not be that conducive. I'll show you that in a second. Look at the intensity here. We have orange showing up. Look at the mark. One line has orange. That would be hurricane strength. That would be a Category 1 hurricane. The rest of these, though are on the weaker side. Strong tropical storm in yellow, middle of the road tropical storm in blue and in green, which most of them have. So even in the more aggressive European operational run, its ensembles are favoring a weaker storm. GFS doesn't have anything on its parent model. It has a few members showing up in its ensembles and it does have a stronger hurricane there towards the panhandle. I mean, category one, it does have a stronger storm toward the panhandle of Florida. Most though, tropical storm toward the peninsula. Again, I would favor the eastern gulf because we have a strong cold front coming down. It's in the realm of possibilities. I'm not saying that we're not going to get a named storm. That 
peer is definitely in the realm of possibilities here. But there are going to be limiting factors. And again, with how warm the water temperature is, record warm, in fact, in parts of the Gulf, we could see this thing try to get strong. What I want to show you now, though, is the upper levels. Wind shear is a component here. And you see it there on Thursday, right around the Yucatan. But look what happens as we get toward the weekend. By the weekend, that thing, whatever it may be, might be somewhere in this area. Okay, somewhere within those two circles. This blue color represents where we're going to have some wind shear. Wind shear tends to knock over the thunderstorm. So however warm the water temperature is, if it cannot sustain thunderstorm development to keep on going up and being knocked down, going up and being knocked down, it's really hard for those storms to kind of organize. It's not a ton of shear. It's not strong shear, but we don't have a perfect environment either for the thing to go gangbusters. With all of that said, it's something to be mindful of. Of course, we have a 50% shot as designated by the Hurricane Center for this thing to kind of ramp up a little bit. Here is that overview, and this is what we're kind of looking at here. I'm going to zoom in on it for you. It's that cluster of thunderstorms over the central right there, that X. So most of the thunderstorms right now are in Central America. Pardon all the names all over the screen, but it's likely going to lift up north. And then that 50% shot, again, as designated by the National Hurricane Center for some gradual development over the next few days. So they believe gradual rather than rapid as well. Those are the uh, meteor expert meteorologists coming from uh, the National Hurricane Center. Water temperatures, we all know it, especially if you live in Florida or anywhere across the Gulf of Mexico. Crazy hot. Again, 88 degree water temperature near the Gulf Coast of Florida, just off the coast of Tampa, St. Pete, 88 degrees, pushing 90 crazy warm. I mean, again, if a storm had perfect conditions, this thing could get really strong. The water temperature is really warm, but I, I do think there's going to be some wind shear for it to fight off, thankfully. The moral of the story is stay posted. Don't completely check out of the weather this weekend. We'll see what happens over the weekend. There's still a lot of questions as to how strong this can get. With the water temperatures warm, never write anything off. Just wanted to show you, again, the limiting factors here. Uh, by 4 o'clock on Thursday, back to the Central Florida Future Radar. Just a few thunderstorms around, mainly to the Gulf Coast. But most of us are going to be nice and dry. High temperatures for your Friday, back to the low to mid-90s. It gets even hotter this weekend. There's this, just a few storms. Again, look at that. A lot of Florida staying dry. There's 7 o'clock on your Friday morning. A few storms west of Miami, right around Key West as well and then by friday evening most are dry if you're trying to get a glimpse of uh the spacex launch early in the morning crew seven most of the state of florida will be cloud free so that's a little little bonus tip that launch early in the morning after three o'clock in the morning so again look east cool launch we have a crew on board important launch to the iss Nonetheless, I think most of the state of Florida will see this thing go up, pending it does go up. And again, weather should not be a factor, uh, downrange or locally. All right, your pinpoint Florida forecast. The heat still on, triple-digit heat for us in the Panhandle, 96 in Pensacola. Panama City, what is going on? 97 degrees. Cedar Key, just a slight opportunity for a shower. We are at 90, a little bit cooler with the, I want to say the Gulf is cool. We just talked about how hot it is, but it moderates our temperature a little bit. 93 in Orlando tomorrow for Friday. 97 in Tampa. Getting a little cooler. 89 with that easterly breeze in Vero Beach and Cape Canaveral. Last but not least, South Florida. That's where our, relatively speaking, higher rain chances lie. But still, on the lower side, 20% shot in Miami. We're hanging around 90. Sarasota, we're at 97. Fort Myers, we are at 95 degrees. All righty, guys. We're watching the tropics close. Again, Watching the strength, there are a lot of questions about how strong this can get. A strong storm, not completely out of the question, okay? So I just want to be clear about that. But I'm leaning towards the side of something on the weaker side because of some of the limiting factors in the upper levels of our atmosphere. 
But we are watching closely. Keep it here. We will keep you posted. Hit that subscribe button, and we will catch you next time. Seriously, thank you guys for tuning in. Really appreciate you guys watching these videos, commenting, liking them. Please do that if you found this video helpful. We'll see you soon.